Okay, welcome to Game Day Sports Radio. I'm here with baseball analyst Rick Strawn. I want to break down the 2023 baseball playoffs now that we've gotten through the uh, first round, which is the wild card. First, Rick, let me talk to you a little bit about the wild card. You know, what's your thoughts there? You know, now that we've gotten out of the you know, a lot of criticism the past couple of years of, you know, you play 162 game season, you get into the wild cards, and then you just had the one game. This year they had the two out of three to, uh, kind of get there even though you have a division winner that has to play in that wild card round but what do you think about that yeah i mean so i didn't think it was bad at all really um i, I thought it was nice that we got more baseball although all four uh games went two and oh uh they were all sweeps but you know i mean overall the more baseball you can get the better it, it does definitely put those teams at a disadvantage right now because uh you've got all those wild card Wild card winners coming in and pitching um, is definitely a little bit, uh, you know, susceptible at this moment. But like you know, we've talked about this before. Um, the other teams now have been off an extra day or two, and sometimes when you're a hot team and you've got everything kind of rolling in the right direction, being off is the worst thing that can happen. So, yeah, that's, you know, that was going to be my next question. I was going to ask you, and you kind of noticed that a little bit. You know, Arizona's hot. they got to play down to the very stretch to get in to make that wild card spot, and they end up knocking off the Brewers, who have been settled in for a couple of days as a division winner in that Central that was pretty weak, uh, you know, that had rested coming in. Philadelphia, same thing. Even though they did, they played Miami, but Miami, that one a little bit settled. The Rangers and – Houston fighting, battling day in, day out. Who's going to win that uh, division, uh, you know? And so they're playing in Texas. Looks good. Um, and again, you got the uh, uh, same thing with the Twinkies, you know? And, and uh, you know, and again, those guys seem to just get to cruise through their playoff matchups because they're playing hot down the stretch, um, um, you know? So do you think that uh, – is it is it is it hard in baseball to really restart it there when you've had those couple of days to uh, – to settle in is it hard to kind of get re, you know to, to start that tractor again i think it, i think most managers if you asked every manager probably 50 percent would say yes 50 percent would say they love it i think it depends on your team um kind of the dynamic of your team but i think it affects hitting a lot more i think hitters need to just constantly be saying i know they're you know they're working every day still but seeing live game pitching I think that is a bigger issue. Pitchers need the break, need a rest. Wild card teams, like I said, you know, their pitchers have thrown a little extra now. Um, they're going to go in not as fresh. Uh, you know, like look at, say, the Braves, for instance. The Braves' top two pitchers, uh, you know, Strider and Max Freed could probably, uh, you know, actually see multiple starts in this thing, whereas there's no chance at all for Nola and uh, – you know, the Phillies pitchers to, to do that, uh, you know, they may even not, I don't think the Phillies have not announced a starter yet. And so going into that game, uh, looking at possibly they're throwing their number three guy in game one and, you know, just to try to get a little bit more rest for their uh, top two guys. And I, I think everybody would love it if they could have their top two guys pitch multiple games and, you know, the Braves and Dodgers are in that position to possibly do that. You know, that's about going to be my next question for you as we talk, you know, and while you're talking about having the, the momentum going into it and really having to fight down the stretch into the to get that wild card spot and then go ahead and play in that series, do you deplete your pitching? Because you had to play so many games down the stretch all the way up to, you know, October 1st, and then you have to play those two games. Where is an Atlanta or an L.A. or a Baltimore? Now they, even though, you know, you talk about the the – the, the, the challenge of starting it back up, but they are now well rested. They're bended, they're pitching, they're bullpen, they're starting pitchers well rested. So they do have that advantage. So that kind of offsets it, uh, not even having to play that series. So does a, a, you know, does that offset that? Yeah. I mean, I think that, like I said before, I think hitters, it's a little bit of a disadvantage for the teams that were off, uh, you know, the teams that won their uh, division didn't have to play a wild card series. They're hitters possibly could be a little bit off you know i think if they're taking live abs and games every single day five six days a week um they stay better they do better um and but being off three or four or five days without seeing live abs i think it can affect them more so uh but i think the pitching the teams that were able to rest their pitchers are in a better spot from that standpoint and when you look at this thing too you got four series here and 
all of them have a clear team that's a better hitting team and a clear team that's a better pitching team, with the exception probably of the Braves Phillies. Um, I think both of those pitching staffs are, are pretty equal, although I know, you know, there's nobody really matches Strider from a strikeout perspective. Um, but, but overall, like pitching, I think that's probably the closest to. Um, everybody else there seems to be a team that's definitely a better hitting team. And, you know, look, the Phillies are definitely not the better hitting team in that series. Um, although if you ask Braves fans, they got uh, – that's all I've heard all day is how bad they got ripped off by the – D-backs and the Dodgers getting to play and the Dodgers not having to face the Phillies, but, uh, you know, it's just how it goes. Uh, yeah, to some extent, I was going to ask you about that, too, because, you know, some sports have do try to, to avoid uh, division uh, matchups in a first round of a playoff game. And obviously the play, the, the, the way they do the uh, the wild card now, that is technically the first round. So they can sit there and say they they've avoided that. Uh, the Phillies uh, coming as a four seed, the Diamondbacks coming as a six seed, and Atlanta comes in as the one, and the Diamondbacks as the six. So again, um, you know, how do you kind of uh, again? I could kind of see that argument because you'd think as the one, the natural progression there would be the Diamondbacks slide down and plate that Philly spot, and you'd have a one six there for Atlanta and the, and, and the Diamondbacks, and then the two four. You know, so so how does that kind of happen? Because again. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, you, you see the same thing on both sides, you know, how, how is, how is that not, how is Atlanta not get the one six matchup? Cause usually that's what you see happen. I don't know. And I haven't actually looked in to see why that happened. Uh, you may probably would know more than I would, but. What? Wait, 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 back up, wake up, but, but say that again, please. I want to make sure we got that a record. I would know more than you would. Did you yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah, Did I'm you say that on air? Did, did we get that recorded? No, I think I think something cut out, and that was a bleed through from a cell phone or something. That was somebody else's conversation. You heard George? Okay. Uh, no, I, I, honestly, I have no idea why that happened, and I agree. Uh, uh, Braves fans have a right to be upset about that. Um, you know, if if the Braves split the first two games and then have to go do two games in Philly, which is quite possibly, if not for absolute positively, the hardest place to play on the road um in this whole series you know i get that and, and I, just after being knocked out last year by the phillies and having to deal with the phillies in philadelphia which is uh again it's about as tough a place to play as there is so you know and then the dodgers if they sweep the diamondbacks which i believe that they possibly will um you know i think the diamondbacks are one of the weaker teams in this thing and i know they've played some good ball lately and uh and they look really good against uh um, the Brewers, but I just don't see how that happened, why it happened, and I understand why Braves fans are mad about it. Yeah, you know, but you do have a little bit too. You do have a little bit of a, an advantage here too. I mean, again, you're not traveling out. I think some people would say for the longevity of the series, if you want to go the distance, some you do get a little advantage not having to go coast to coast on that travel. So break it down first a little bit. Let's go ahead and start since we are talking about a six-two matchup there. Tell us a little bit. Uh, obviously, we're not going to go real deep in each of these games. We'll go a little bit deeper when we get into the uh, championship series. But as far as the divisional series go, you know, who do you like there? The Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Obviously, most people would sit there and say the Dodgers got the clear advantage there. But go ahead and break it down just a little. Give us a brief synopsis on who you see advancing there. Yeah, I mean, I think the Dodgers are clearly the better team. I think the Diamondbacks um, <clears throat> are probably going to have to play their absolute best baseball uh, going into LA for the first two games, uh, I, I expect them to probably be down two to nothing going back to Arizona. I just don't see right now. I think the Dodgers have a better pitching staff and they're a better hitting team, and overall just a better. Uh, they score more runs, produce better. I, I don't see any way really. Uh, you know, it's baseball though. You got to play the games, and and it's not like the Diamondbacks are a bad team, and they've played really hot lately. So if they carry that over, and you know, and their bats could be hot but they have not put up a lot of runs, uh, very good defensive team. And so, you know, I think when it comes down to that, though, just the fact is, is it against mediocre pitching, they've still not really hit the ball extremely well. And I think they're about to run into a really good pitching staff in LA that I don't see the Diamondbacks putting up enough runs to uh, hang with them. Speaking of pitching staff, it's going to be real interesting. And I know you've been on, uh, been a supporter of his for a long time is Trevor Bauer. They're very interesting. Trevor Bauer news coming out today. 
Um, looks like the, the woman's going to be find herself in a world of hurt here legally from a legal perspective, you know, but I think that's one thing, regardless of how he gets vindicated here, what happens? I mean, it's, it's lost time, time. You can't get back a career. You can't get back, not only from a perception standpoint, but he's older, you know, and, uh, uh, those are years you can't get back just real quick without even you know, getting too far off on a tangent here. Thoughts and initial thoughts on that real quick. Yes. I mean, I think that, uh, I, I would like to see Trevor Bauer uh, win a lawsuit against Major League Baseball. I have a feeling if he files one, they're probably going to try to settle. Um, I think that they used a vendetta that had nothing to do with this case, but used this to settle a vendetta they had against Trevor Bauer over the uh, uh, sticky fingers ball stuff and everything, you know, and he embarrassed him. And that's what Trevor Bauer does. He's got a big mouth. He runs his mouth. He's an incredibly smart guy, but sometimes he doesn't know when to shut up. And, you know, a lot like you, George. Um, <laughs> yeah, you were right. He, uh, come back. <laughs> but overall, he pitched really well in Japan uh, this year. I think he learned a lot. I think he's one of the best students of the game. I think he's one of the hardest working pitchers in the game. Um, and I, I watched every one of his outings in Japan this year, and I thought he was fantastic. Uh, he's oddly enough, his velo is higher than it's ever been. And I think all of this, I think his stuff right now is the best it's ever been. And if a major league team picks him up, which I'm almost positive that somebody will, and you know, and we forget too, last year he made a lot of money. The Dodgers had to pay him $22 million, um, and then he made four million in Japan. So uh, I do think that in LA, I think has a case to go after Major League Baseball as well to recoup some of that money. Um, and now whether that's a possibility, I don't know. I really don't know how their whole uh, collective bargaining thing works and if that is a possibility, but I do see that Major League Baseball put this guy out of the game over something. He's never changed his story. Now she, now that it's out completely, that she premeditated setting him up for this suit and everything um, definitely want her to go to jail too. And I think that's the part that's not really being talked about that much is most women don't make up sexual um, assault cases. I don't, I don't believe, I believe most of them, it, it puts them really out there and everything. And I think this did more damage to women yeah. now coming out that, you know, because everybody assumes that, you know, he was guilty. Everybody yeah. did. And, you know, and even I, I think that's something, I think that's something you got to see here too. And, and, and you got to let it play out and see where, you know, and, but the evidence does look extremely damning at this point, but I think that's what you got to see is the people that were ready to hang him, you know, at the, uh, mm -hmm. the town that the, the, the town entrance, uh, I need to be ready to stand up for him now because, you know, some of those same women's advocate, you know, groups that advocate for women rightfully so, because if what he did to her was, true um it needs to be uh you know he should have been punished punished and penalized uh, severely but at the same rate then they you know, a lot of times they just uh, you know kind of slinker off into the sunset so, you know silently and uh you know then they need to be and i'm not sure i'd say a male culpa but i don't think they need to because i agree with you the what she did is uh just as bad and, and hurts all women and hurts the women that uh, that it actually happens to so right yeah so. somebody who's got a wife and daughters and everything that we have like you know i, I want to see the system work for them and all that she did was take away and put doubt in people's minds um and, and harm that process so yeah. yeah i think there should be severe penalties for that yeah. because you know what i read today is that she not only texted people that she was gonna do this she did that like months in advance and said exactly how the thing she told the police and everything she said that months in advance that she was going to do that and say that and it would be a surefire case for her. Yeah. and you know i think she picked the wrong guy to try that with yeah getting back to some baseball here too you know what I mean? right. getting back to you know atlanta obviously they're very frustrated but i mean you got probably three, and no offense to uh, Baltimore because they had a great season, but I think you got three of the four teams, best teams in baseball all in the National League in the Phillies, the uh, Braves, and the and L.A. So I think you kind of you, you you're kind of stuck with whoever you you know you get over there. So regardless, you're going to have to get through at least one of them. But again, I think it brought uh, a good uh, you got a great Phillies uh, Atlanta series coming up and. Does whoever come out of this one get too battered up that uh, does give the Dodgers a clean path to the World Series if they get past the Diamondbacks? I mean, I'm not ready to go there because I think that Baltimore's a really good baseball team. Uh, they don't hit quite as well as L.A., but I think their pitching staff probably matches them. Defensively, I think they match them. 
Um, and, and nobody's really talking much about the Twins, but go back to opening day. Who in the world would project the Twins to be where they're at right now? Well, go uh, back to uh, Twins. We're talking of the contraction years ago. Contraction, remember? The, the, right. The, that even yeah, work I mean, that you I could mean, see in baseball. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, having one of my favorite college players of all time, Edward Julian, to get called up just at the beginning of this season. But I would think they were a month into the season when they call him up, and now he's held the leadoff spot for the whole season and batting, I think, 265 with 16 home runs. Um, and, you know, he's barely 23 years old, 22 years old, something like that. Uh, and, and then, you know, uh, Henderson for uh, – Baltimore, Adley Rutschman, who's one of my favorite collegiate players ever. Um, as you know, I like college baseball slightly more than major league baseball. But watching these guys that like I've watched their college careers and how good they are now, these guys, a guy like Adley Rutschman, who when he was taken number one, I told everybody, I was like, that guy is going to make a difference in baseball because he's, he's just got that thing about it. And so watching that work out for him. Uh, Gunnar Henderson, another one, you know, hated it when he didn't show up at Auburn and decided to go in the draft uh, and everything, but he made the right decision. Did you um, really, did you really have to get an Auburn reference in here? I thought we were done with the college football show for a little while. I mean, Edward Julian's one of my favorite Auburn players of all time. Okay. And he's a leadoff batter all for right. the twins right now, all man. Right. And he's yeah. killing it. We love you, know? you. So we tolerate you, man. We love you. So we that's tolerate that's you. Right. So. So well, give we're it to baseball, me. not football, man. So, you know, there's one team that's way better in one sport and one that's a little bit better than the other. Yeah, so I know you're not going to want to probably pick one here, but go ahead and give it to us. Who do you like coming out of here, the Braves or the Phillies? I like the Braves. Do uh, I do. So, I, yeah, so I think, think the Braves you got a, you, got a, you think you got a Braves, uh, Braves uh, Dodgers, NLCS? I do. Yeah, I, I really think so. I, I would love to see the Diamondbacks knock off the Dodgers, but the realist in me doesn't see that happening. The Dodgers are a really good baseball team. Um, and, and I think they're just better in every aspect than the Diamondbacks. I think as good as the Phillies are and as hard as it is to play in Philly, this is not the Braves from last year that came into this series with Spencer Strider injured. Uh, I think Max Fried was injured going into that series uh, and not at, not at 100%. Right now the Braves are healthy, and they are by far the superior hitting team and offensive team than the Phillies are, as good as the Phillies are. They're just, they can't match. Nobody can match what the Braves are doing at the plate this year. One, two for the Diamondbacks. It's one thing to sit there and say, you know, you lost on the <laughs> final day of the season to get in, even as a wild card, because, you know, so and so lost, you know, because you're kind of watching the scoreboard. But to limp into the playoffs as a wild card, even at that, losing your last four as the Diamondbacks did, you know, losing four straight, you know. To get right. into that, uh, that 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 doesn't bode well going. And then you know, yeah, then they they handled the Brewers, but I think the Brewers came in there sleepwalking because they, I mean, they played in one of the worst divisions of baseball all year, and they had it locked up in, I think, as soon as September rolled around, and they slept walked through September, and I'm not even sure they realized the playoffs even started. I think they're getting ready to get on a bus, and then somebody's going to tell them tomorrow their season's over at the Brewers, because um, that series just looked like a a, a nothing burger. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, it, it, it really is crazy that we had four series and they were all sweeps yeah. and it didn't even seem close at any point for any of them. Um, I, I was really surprised by that. Obviously, I hate it when they're sweeps. I want max games and everything. If it's a three game series. I want three for everybody. I want, you know, just the more baseball we can get, the better. I hate a sweep in the World Series is the worst thing ever, um, unless it's a team that I'm really pulling for, which is rare that there's actually a team that I have a favorite. I, honestly, I wanted the Rays to be in this thing. Uh, they definitely laid a nothing burger uh, in their series. A 99, <laughs> a, 99, a 99 game. Well, that's the thing, too. You go Texas and Houston delivered. I mean, they were battling all season long, and you got two 90-game winners in the, uh, the uh, AL West. You know, Baltimore 101-game winner, Tampa Bay 99. They battled. Uh, again, I, 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 to sit there and say, uh, you know, uh, I think the disappointment there was too. I mean, what's it? Uh, all, all you've heard everybody talking about. Nobody's talking about that game down there. Everybody's talking about what they had only like eight thousand fans show up. I mean, they get more game, more fans at a UCLA football game than they can get at the uh, Tampa Bay playoff game. Yeah, it, it, that's that's the really tough and embarrassing part of it, it, it is that side of the whole race thing, but. Um, I think the biggest thing too for me is is like general managers, and this is why, like you know, where we live here, 
you know, a million Braves fans. I, I don't know if you're a Braves fan or not. Um, I definitely don't dislike the Braves. I, you know, I like to see them have success. But my entire life, having my granddad and everybody I knew being enormous Braves fans and watching them every year get their hopes built up to watch the Braves peter out as soon as the playoffs began because they don't make any of the moves or spend the money. And lately they've done things differently and it's showing. So it makes it easier for me to say like a team like the Braves, uh, their general manager and their ownership are the reason they're where they're at. Um, you know, if, if the ownership hires a GM and dedicates to winning baseball games, you turn out like the Braves are doing right now, but also look at like the Texas Rangers and the Minnesota twins, whose GMs have busted their butts to get them where they're at right now. Yeah. I was going to uh, say, if you want to talk about the GM, Texas Rangers, they made the moves they need to make down the stretch and at the trade deadline to make sure that right. they got there. And they were, you know, Texas Rangers were one of the hottest teams in baseball, you know, the first half of the season. And, uh, you know, they, they, some injuries, they battled through some injuries and some of the normal fatigue that you're going to go through through a 162 game season. And their GM saw that and was, uh, you know, proactive and made the moves that they needed to make to make sure that they were there in September to get there. And they are some playing some hot baseball. And to be honest with you, uh, they're one of my teams to watch out for. I think they're playing some good and hot baseball right now. And I think they're uh, hungry and I think they're one uh, team to watch fought for. And I'll tell you what. If uh, in my book right now, if I'm Baltimore, that was the one team I probably didn't want to see uh, coming into coming into the playoffs. What do you think about that statement there? Oh no, I agree 100. percent I actually think the Rangers are going to win that series, and I hate it for Baltimore. I think Baltimore's GM is another guy that gets that should get a lot of credit because he's built that team over the last several years through the draft. He's made great draft picks, um, and they've made some good trades, and they've called guys up. They, they've done everything right to be where they're at, but their bats are not the same as the Rangers bats overall. Mm -hmm. I think Texas is a better hitting team. Baltimore edges them out a little bit, I think in the pitching side of things, but you know, and I know how it goes, like in the playoffs, pitching wins, all that, uh, you know, but I you got to you got to put runs up and I don't think you know that a very young Baltimore team is going to put up the runs that you know a more veteran Rangers team is going to manage. So I actually think that the Rangers are going to win that series. Yeah, I do too. I think you're, I think you're a smart man there. Getting to the Twinkies, uh, real quick, Twinkies, Blue Jays series. And uh, you and I talk about this a lot as we're covering some baseball games. I'm looking forward to having another season with you uh, out on the diamond, which will be turf this year, so I can't give you a hard time about the dirt. Um, but, you know, it's <laughs> something you and I talk about all the time. And there's two, there's two, type, there's two baseballs, and there's two seasons within baseball. And I just think – it's an art that managers have lost, and it just kills me. And, you know, you're starting off the Twinkies and the, uh, and the Blue Jays series, and the Blue Jays leadoff man gets on base on, a, on, a, uh, on an air, and then you get a pop out to the catcher, you get, I think, a, a strikeout, and then you get a routine ground ball. Why, what has happened to small ball? Where is playoff manufacturer run baseball and take advantage of an air? Because I felt like that set the tone in game one, and then the Twins come up and – Hit a two-run shot in the bottom, and they're down to, uh, in the in the bottom. It seemed, seemed to set the tone for the entire series. So, I mean, how are do I mean, I get it in the regular season. Sometimes you don't do it. You're not playing small ball because that's not what the fans want to see. But this is playoff baseball. Has do managers just not even know how to play small ball anymore? Uh, I, I, no, I don't think that's the case at all. I think putting that on all the managers over one manager's uh, absolute screw up there is the is wrong to do because I think we're going to see really good. We've got good managers. Um, you know, there's a lot of really good managers uh, in the playoffs right now. We're going to see small ball. I think this is going to be one of the more exciting postseasons just because of the new base rule and the amount of stolen bases uh, that we've seen this year from just that simple rule. It was between the pitching rules and the base uh, bases being larger. We've seen uh, stolen bases go up uh, an incredible amount. Uh, it, what uh, the Braves have done stealing the bases, uh, you know, and these teams are running. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of really good small ball. I think with the pitch, this is going to be the first playoffs we've had with these new pitching rules. And I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, what do you think about I'm going to stop you right, right there real quick. What do you think about the pitching rules? You heard a lot of bitching about it at the beginning of the season and it kind of died down and by all accounts, attendance and viewership is up a little bit, you know, and it has sped up the game a little bit and, 
I, I think Major League Baseball did listen a little bit and take some of the players' concerns into account. And uh, the union started to make some noise, and everybody said, hey, hold on, wait a minute. This is, a, you know, where we are going to take this into account, and let's work together to get this out. And I think, yeah, I think you will see some changes come in the offseason and maybe make a few tweaks. But what, all in all, you know, heading into the playoffs, what's your, what's your kind of before, you know, before the end of the season grade on the new pitching rules? Yes, I mean, I like it. It's it at the beginning of the year, didn't like it, just like the players didn't like it. And that's simply because people hate change, right? It's different. But I think that's, that's why you heard it, like, kind of die down as the season went along. Everybody got used to it. Now, was there still some issues at times and things? And like you said, uh, obviously, is, a, is year one. If there's not some tweaks, then Major League Baseball's not doing it right. Um, I think you got to put a rule in and then reevaluate it after the season and say, you know, I think we could tweak this, tweak that. I think there was some times where it was not used correctly um, and everything. I think the out of the three major rule changes, the pitching clock, the bases uh, get being larger, and them banning the shift. Banning the shift is the only one that I think was a huge, huge mistake. Um, I, I just don't see why that matters. I'm not going to get into it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why it matters because if you're going to shift on me, I'll just bunt it down the line and, you know, well, take what I'm saying. Like, yeah, what it was I mean, a cop what? out for batters not being good at their jobs. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? Be a better hitter. So, anyways, but yeah, we got, we got that covered. All right. Back on the, uh, back on the, but yeah. Uh, so you're saying that uh, you're saying I'm overreacting. You're saying, George, you're overreacting again. It was one bad call, one bad mistake by a manager that the, uh, a the, manager who I'm, didn't make it to any further in the playoffs. Because so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get to see my, my, my favorite uh, part, one of my favorite parts of the game, manufactured runs and the strategy of, uh, you know, managers. Uh, now again, you, you, you we're going to see, you know, this is where you're going to start to see, too, a little bit more strategy coming in. You know, a lot of managers will be making switches, batter after batter. What do they got to stay in now? They got to stay in for two full two full batters or three full batters when they come in? Three. Three. So, you, you yeah. will start to see some more strategy come in with pitching changes, and they will have to work that down the line some, right? Yeah, it's going to – I mean, for managers, this is going to be the most pressure they've had on them because of these rules. And – before you could just bring a guy and throw one pitch, and we've seen it a hundred times. Uh, come in and face one batter, um, just all kinds of things. And we've seen them change, you know, three pitchers for three batters and things like that. The games are definitely going to change now. The pitch clock, you know, they've got what five extra seconds on the pitch clock now. Uh, I, what I would like to see in the playoffs, kind of, I guess, would be not being able to throw over but twice. I, I think that is, I don't know. To me, that that's part of the game of baseball. If you throw over five times in a row, whatever, uh, I just think that's part of it. I know why they did it was to keep pitchers from being able to keep a batter standing in the box forever. And that was right. one of the things is that. But I, I just, you know, again, that may be something they tweak next year. But right now it's what we have. Uh, and so I, I do think, though, seeing stolen bases uh, skyrocket this year, uh, I can't wait to see the playoffs. Uh, you know, I think between the third and sixth, seventh inning, we're going to see some uh, hit and runs, some bunt runs, which you just don't see in Major League Baseball a whole lot anymore. Um, I don't think we'll see a lot of it. We're definitely going to see stolen bases, though. Uh, you're going to see some, you know, sacrifice bunts, sacrifice flies. Uh, I think that the runs are going to go up this play this season and the postseason from previous years because of these rules, uh, which obviously that happened all season. We saw runs go up. So is uh, Houston, the Astros, is their post season success come to a close here against the Twins? The only thing I only thing I saw about the Twins that made me a little bit nervous is uh, I really, really thought they were hot to trot. And I did, though, uh, question their defense a little bit in that first series. I thought they were getting away from some fundamentals. A couple of times they got lucky not backing up on some plays. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, did they correct those errors and, uh, did they tighten it up a little bit and the, the twins get past the, uh, the Strohs? Uh, I, I don't think so. I would love to see it happen. Uh, I, I said earlier, I don't like sweeps, but I would take a twin sweep over Houston and be pretty happy about it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Houston's a better team. Um, and they've got the experience. That's the most experienced team, you know, just about. Uh, we have a lot of experienced teams in here. I think right now the Rangers, Baltimore, and the Twins are very inexperienced playoff teams, obviously. Houston's the most experienced team in the whole thing. Uh, and the Dodgers, the Dodgers and Braves are all, you know, they've all been there. Um, so I, I don't see the Twins hanging with the uh, Rangers. 
Who's your uh, divisional? Who's your divisional breakout player? Uh, who's your breakout player of the divisional series? Either either side. Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. All right, well, I'll give you some time to think about that one. We'll so yeah, we're gonna yeah. get back. We're gonna get back together Sunday night. And we're gonna see where we stand and we'll kind of break out where we are and where we see it going. We're gonna try to get together with you guys about every two three days and uh, pick Rick's uh, brain on a few things. So he's still trying to figure out what a slider is. Uh, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, I do have one other question for you. This is something that came up in the uh, the Blue Jays Twins uh, series. That you know, uh, you think umpires tighten their zone a little bit going into the playoffs, and the players know that. And then, as, as re- in respect, they kind of tighten theirs up a little bit because you know you could see a couple of, uh, of of times in that series that the players weren't even flinching at some pitches that you almost know almost every time they're going out in the regular season, and it almost felt like you know. Just as a, and I'm not, not not bagging it. Just kind of felt like, okay, we're in the playoffs. We know we, we're going to get a tighter zone, and we know they're not going, uh, you know, that much on. But and uh, it just seemed like they caught a little bit tighter. But at the same rate, it also felt like the pitchers had dialed in a little tighter too. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I really feel like umpires are very similar to the managers and everything. Like the managers in the regular season. Sometimes if you're not at a half game behind and, you know, late September or something, uh, in June, I think managers are sometimes seeing what you've got. What's this batter going to do if I let him swing away on 3-0 with a runner in scoring position as opposed to bonding a guy over or something like that? Uh, I think that it, they kind of toy with and see what they've got. When it comes to the playoffs, I think managers really dial in and know I have to man you. I cannot leave a run on that field. And I think umpires are the same way. I think umpires like the whole world's on me now, not just one market or a small market or whatever. I think that the umpires are like, okay, I'm in the playoffs. I have to perform my absolute best. Just like any player does. I think the players all feel pressure to perform better in the playoffs and to absolutely do their best every day. I think, you know, on June 2nd, a player goes out and has a bad day. He shakes it off. I think if he has a bad day uh, this coming Saturday, I think he's, you know, it's going to mean a lot more to him and it's going to hurt a lot more. So they're going to put everything they have into it. And I think that's what happens with umpires. I, I do. I think that they really want to make sure every call, I think none of them want to be a Angel Hernandez and go out and call a strike. That's a foot out of the zone and, and that type of thing. And, uh, or not call a strike that's right down the middle. So yeah. I, and hopefully, right. by the way, is, is, is Hernandez going to, is he banned from the postseason this year? I think I he is. I think he I is banned from baseball next season. All right. So what Mr. Strong has got Atlanta, the Dodgers, the Astros reluctantly somewhat in his, in his head, he's got the Strohs, but in his heart, he's hoping tw- the Twinkies can pull it off. And the Rangers his big upset of the uh, first round of the player, the divisional series here is the Texas Rangers. So you'll have an all Texas and then the uh, traditional uh, East coast, West coast matchup in the, uh, in the uh, championship series before we head to the world series. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday night. And uh, Rick, it's always a pleasure talking some baseball with you. I uh, wish we could be doing it outside. It's always much more enjoyable then. But uh, uh, great talking to you tonight, and uh, we'll talk Sunday. Sounds good. Thanks, Rick.